let's make our dino diorama. Hi, it's Lori from the Art Studio at Madison Children's Museum. I'm going to show you how you can use the items from your kit to make your very own dinosaur terrarium. We're going to be using our little plastic paint can bucket here for our terrarium container. And your kit came with all of these items, our clay, our little dinos, we've got rocks and some moss and little plants. Um, and this is our special uh, black light, little tea light, which is going to show the glowing colors of some of the items in our terrarium if you put it in front of, um, of it in a dark space. Now I gathered a few materials from my art supplies that we're gonna be using with our kit. So I have my tacky glue. You could use any kind of white glue if you don't have tacky glue. And I've got a pencil, a pair of scissors, and I got my uh, kit of markers out because I'm gonna be adding a few little details using markers. Now let's think about how we're going to design our dinosaur scene. So your kit came with all kinds of colorful papers of different kinds. Some of these will glow very nicely under the UV light. So I'm gonna use some of my paper. I decided I want to make mine with sort of like a little paper backdrop that's going to be behind my scene. Now this is an option, you don't have to do this. So if you want to do this step, I'm gonna measure and see how tall my container is. I'm gonna make a little mark with my pencil. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this piece of black paper. And this is going to be kind of like the backdrop of my terrarium. So when I put it in there, you're going to be able to look at your little scene and then you'll have this solid black backdrop. So I'll take this out again. Now on my backdrop, I'm gonna use some of my colored paper and my art supplies, and I'm gonna make kind of a fun scene behind my dinosaurs like kind of a little Jurassic world. So I'm going to, let's see, I will cut some of my paper. I'm gonna make some like mountain shapes in the background. And I'm just gonna freehand cut these. Now you could add anything you wanted to. If you wanted to draw some dinosaurs on paper using your markers and add those in, or some plants. See, this is gonna look pretty cool on my black paper. So I'm gonna add my, little mountain shapes here to my backdrop and add a few more details. If you wanted to draw like a flying pterodactyl in the background or if you wanted to add the sun or maybe I think I might add um, some more plant designs. So I'll use my markers here and I think I'll draw some kind of a Jurassic looking plant, like these sort of like giant ferns that used to grow in the time of the dinosaurs. Here, I'll make maybe a smaller one too. And you can use your markers or any other kind of art supplies that you have to do this part. I'm gonna add some stem on my plant, maybe some little details. I'm working really fast. I'm sure that you all can do a much more thorough job of this than I did. And now I'm going to cut these out so I can add those uh, to the background of my mural. Now younger children, you might really want to simplify this. You could just give a younger child a piece of paper for the background and markers and then they can draw some details. Uh, older kids that really want to take this to the next level, you can be as elaborate as you want with creating a backdrop for your terrarium scene. There, I'm going to add, I'm going to add my little plants to my scene here. Let's see, what else should I put in? Maybe, um, maybe my scene could use like a volcano too. So I'll use another scrap of paper here. That's not quite tall enough. Let's see, maybe I'll make, I'll make an orange volcano. I'll make it very tall over here and that can be part of my backdrop and then we'll get to adding some of our figures and details to our scene. Now that this is done, I'm just going to curve this a little bit and I'm going to set this 
into our can so that you can see it when you look through the clear part. In fact, maybe I'll turn this a little bit because my can has that seam and I think I want to cover that part up. So now it looks a lot better that you don't see that seam in the front. So in your kit, you will have some neon colored Model Magic clay and it comes in a few different neon colors. I got orange. I'm going to use my clay to make a base for my scene. Now I'm going to hold a little bit of my clay back. I'm just going to pinch off a little bit there because I'm going to find that useful for adding some of my plants and my details. So with my Model Magic clay, I'm going to squish it out with my fingers and I'm going to put it down in the bottom of my can. Now this is going to take a little bit of work to squish it around on the base of my can here just I'm trying to do this a little bit backwards I think cameraman I'm gonna pick this up and there we go that's a lot easier for me to do so I'm gonna kind of spread this out sort of like pizza dough in the bottom of my container and see I'm kind of squishing it around the base this takes a little bit of time to get it done so it covers the whole thing, but you should have enough clay in your kit to go all the way around. And see, as I add it around, see how it's sort of holding my backdrop in place there? Cool. There we go. So this is gonna make a really cool base for our scene. Now let's decide what we wanna add into our scene. So I have, I have three different dinos here. Looks like I got, I, you know, I'm sad to say that I am not an expert on dinosaur species. Uh, I think this is a Triceratops. This might be a T-Rex. Maybe this is a different, it could be a mama and baby T-Rex. I'm not really sure. Um, dinosaur experts out there, feel free to correct me. We also have some of these fun different plants. Now, some of these are, might be a little bit larger, so you can use your scissors and you can cut them into smaller pieces if you want to and then decide where you want your plants to go in your scene. So I'm going to put my taller, bigger things in first, my plants. So I think I might want to cut this one into two pieces and I'm going to put, I think, my tallest plant in here first. So I'm going to use a little pinch of my clay. Remember how I said we were going to save a little bit of it back? I'm going to kind of form it around the base here like a little blob like that and then I'm going to use that to stick my plant in. Now this is why we have our pencil. We're going to use the eraser end of our pencil and we're going to use that to push around our base there so that we can stick our plant in place. Cool. Now I will add a few of my other plants. You just need to use little, little bits of this clay. You don't have to use very much at all. It's going to stick to the clay that we've already put into our base. And then we need to do, I think I want to plant over here. See, I'm putting these a little bit in the back because I want my dinosaurs to be in what we would call the foreground, the part of the diorama that is towards the front, towards your eye. Now, if you have any little treasures in your treasure box that you want to add to your diorama, you would be welcome to do that. Like maybe you have some special rocks or little sparkly things, maybe some characters, some little miniatures. Feel free to add any other little items that you might want. And you can think about how you're arranging these as you go. You can stop and here I'm going to get down. I'm going to look from, look from the front, make sure I like my view. And I'm going to save a couple of my plants to put a little bit closer to the front. So let's decide what kind of a dinosaur scene I want to have here. I think I want to have this guy a little bit more in the back. And then I'm going to have my, I'm going to think that these are two maybe Tyrannosaurus Rexes having a fight. Like they often did. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on my little Triceratops there. And I'm going to put him way in the back here like he might be heading towards this plant over here to have a snack. And now I can use some of my mosses and my rocks if I want to, to put around my figures. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this moss 
purple moss. I have a feeling this may have been added, uh, have some added color on it. It doesn't really look like something you might see in nature. I'm gonna push that down a little bit and add a few more little bits. Now, if you wanna arrange these before you glue them in place, you're welcome to do that. Uh, also, I remember when I did this project with kids before at the museum, we had some very creative ideas about using bits of um, paper to create things like water. Like if you wanted to make a little pond, you could cut a piece of blue paper for the water or foil and then put some clay around it to make it look like water. And I can also add some of my colorful aquarium rocks here. Now to do this, I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to my base so that the rocks stay in place. I'm gonna squish some glue there. Now I'm gonna get my pointer finger a little bit glue covered here. If you want to, you could use a paintbrush to do this part. That would be a lot easier to get down in your terrarium without getting your hands covered with glue. I'm gonna shake a few of my colorful rocks here. They stay in place. It's gonna look like something you could eat, like fruity pebbles. All right, let me add my fighting dinos. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on their feetses here. Find a good place. Here, I'll put this one right in the front. You might really want to think about where things look the best in your terrarium by just placing them in different places before you're really sure that you want to glue them down. And I'm kind of pushing my dino tails into the clay a little bit and that'll keep them in place. All right, we've got a face off between two T-Rexes here. It's going to be a fierce battle. And I have a couple of my little plants left here. Let's see, I think I'm gonna put this one over in that corner there. So I'll use a little bit of my clay. Ah, forming it around the base of my plant. And then remember, we're going to use our um, pencil of poking to squish our plant down. I'm gonna kind of look at it from the top. Oh, I changed my mind. I want it over here. I want it over here to provide some more food for my little triceratops back there who is a plant eater from what I recall. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of corrections from my dino experts out there. Feel free to leave a comment. Okay, my last plant, I'm gonna put him way in the front. Sometimes it's good to have things in the front and the back of a scene use my pencil and really squish it down there. Now I think I'll use the rest of my moss and my rocks to finish off my scene. But you can use as much or as little of these items as you want. And if you have something like a pair of tweezers, sometimes when you make a diorama like this it can be useful to have something that you can use to place items down into your scene. I'm gonna have to use my fingers delicately to squish my moss there. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this around the edge. And I think I'll finish it off by just maybe pouring a few more rocks into my scene here. I'm gonna use the end of my pencil to add a little bit of glue. Make sure that this is an old pencil that you don't need to write with so that you can get a little bit of glue on it. I'm gonna add some of this back here so that my rocks will stick. I'm gonna pour a few more of my rocks in there. Now I'll look at my scene from the front. Cool. I really love how this is turning out. Maybe put a few more rocks here in the front. 
Now if you have some moss around the edges, let's try to dust that off a little bit. I think we've got a bit of static electricity that wants to have that stick there. Okay, now when our diorama is complete, if you put your diorama in a dark area, then you can turn on your flickering black light and look at your scene and see some of the glowing colors show up. I think this looks awesome even in daylight though. I hope you'll have a really good time doing this project. Our dino diorama.